Good morning, FUMC friends and family. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. And obviously we're joining together in a little bit different way again, and that's due to some COVID precautions. In case you hadn't heard, Lisa Mountain tested positive earlier this week with COVID. And so Pastor Sam uh, got a test on Friday and we're awaiting those results. Uh, but until we get those results back, we've decided simply to close the, the building and the office, even to staff. So we're not live streaming this morning, but we're joining together in a different way. So certainly be praying for Sam and Lisa, and we will be in touch with you this week to let you know um, our steps forward from that and certainly how they're doing. But you can know, thankfully, that uh, the symptoms are very mild. They're doing well, but they're quarantining at home. So just keep praying for them. In the meantime, we do get to be together, we get to worship together, so let's prepare our hearts and just spend some time singing here together this morning. This is Dennis. Sabin. Dennis Sabin? Yeah. Okay, Dennis Sabin. Anyway, so today we came here to talk to you about names. Names? You don't want to know the names they call me. Oh, I'm sorry, Dennis. They call me a dunny. Oh, hmm. Let me say. Okay, I saw that. Okay, anyhow. Okay, Dennis. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But I want to sing first. Oh, Dennis. My joy song. Your joy song? Yeah. That is, every kid out there has heard your joy song probably a hundred times. Yeah, but it's my favorite song. Okay, go ahead. Sing your joy song. I've got the joy, 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 joy up in my head. Up in my... Dennis, what? You don't have the joy in your head. Oh, now sing it right. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my feet. Down in your feet. Look at my shoe. <sighs> I fooled it that time. Dennis, I've seen this about 200 times. It doesn't fool me anymore. Oh, come on now. Why don't you sing it nice? Sing it right for the kids so you don't have to go back in your suitcase. Okay, okay. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, 
down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack to stay. Okay. That was very nice, Dennis. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to talk about names. Okay. I have a lot of names. You do? Yep. Are you a criminal? I'm not a criminal. Okay, that's because criminals have a lot of names, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. No. I've got a lot of names. My name is Linda. And my family and my friends and people that know me, they all call me Linda. Well, that's a good name. Mm-hmm. And I also am called Grammy. What? That is funny. Okay. Well, anyway, Grammy. And the people that call me Grammy are my grandchildren. And that's George and Mackenzie. And I'm also called an aunt. You don't look like an aunt. Well, I am an aunt. Not that kind of aunt. This is an, another kind of aunt. A-U-N-T. Oh. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth calls me Aunt Linda because she's my niece. And then I also have the name of mom. You are a mom? Mm-hmm. And my daughter Tina calls me mom. Ah. Well, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So I've got a lot of names. And you know what? Today we're going to talk about the names that God has. God has a lot of names? Yes, he does. He's got lots of names. I know some of them. Go ahead. Jesus. That's right. The Holy Ghost. Oh, you don't like ghosts? Okay, it's not that kind of ghost, Dennis. It's also called the Holy Spirit. And that's something that, that is God is also called the Holy Spirit. But you know what? He's got some other really, really strange sounding names. He does. Mm-hmm. One of his names is Elohim, and Elohim means my creator. He made us. He made all the people in the world. He's in me. Well, not you, but a lot of other people. A lot of people. You, you remember, you're not real. You're a puppet. Oh, I sure got. Okay. And he's also called Jehovah, which means my Lord God. Oh, wow. That is a funny name. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah Jireh. He's called my provider. He's got a first and a last name? No, no, no. It's just the way they said it. Oh. And he's also called Jehovah Rohi, which means my shepherd. Oh. Well, that's cool. You don't look like sheep, though. No, I'm not a sheep, but God calls us his sheep, his children. But you know, my favorite name that he's called is called Abba. Abba what? Abba means father or daddy or papa. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you know what? God is our father if we love him and have him in our hearts. And you know what? He loves us so much. He loves us no matter what we do. He forgives us. He stays with us. He never leaves us alone. He's always with us. And he really, really cares about us. You know, that's cool. I know it's cool. It really makes me happy to know that. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So when we think about God, we not only want to think about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but we want to think of these other names, and especially the name of Abba, Father. And, you know, why we, we're special about that is today's Father's Day. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. Okay, let's say a little prayer. Ready? Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the kids that are here today. And I just pray that they'll always remember how much you love them and how you are their father. In your name we pray. Amen. I don't have a father. You don't have a father? No. Why not? He got eaten by woodpeckers. Oh, Des. All right. Well, listen. We have a father, and we love him very much. Abba, Father. It's time to say goodbye. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Can I say goodbye? Go ahead and say goodbye. 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 Dennis, come back here. Dennis, come back here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. And thank you for being here, kids. And we'll see you next time. Tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Day after tomorrow? No, not the day after tomorrow. We'll see them in a couple weeks. Okay. See you later, guys. <laughs>
It's so good, isn't it, to sing praises to our God? I hope the words of these songs have served to just lift your heart this morning, because we need that, don't we? And as we go to prayer now, we certainly have a lot to pray for. So let me share a few of these things before we, we do pray together. Obviously, we need to be praying for Sam and Lisa, as has already been mentioned. But in addition to that, be praying for our college students. They, some of them have left already to go back to school. Some of them will be leaving this week. Um, but just pray for them as they get settled into a new semester. Obviously, we need to keep praying for our other students in our high school, middle school, elementary school. Be praying for our teachers. Be praying for our administrators. This is a difficult time for those in the education field. So we need to be lifting them up uh, to the Lord. And we do have a few teachers in our church family. Obviously, we need to be praying for our country as well. Um, this is an important week as we change uh, hands in leadership. Be praying for our government. Be praying for uh, Donald Trump as he's stepping out. Be praying for uh, the new president, Joe Biden, as he's stepping in. And certainly be praying for our country at this time. A few missionary updates that I want to bring to your attention, too. I saw an email yesterday from Dave and Andrea Brunner, who have been serving for a very long time out in Idaho and Utah. Uh, they are in a transition now. They will be wrapping up their ministry there and moving back to Pennsylvania. So we really need to be praying for them during this time of transition and as, as God shows them what is next. I got a very sad um, piece of information yesterday, and I want to read something to you. Um, <clears throat> I got an email yesterday from Larry Buckman's son and found out that he was in the hospital and then found out a little bit later in the afternoon that he actually passed away and went home to be with the Lord. Um, so let me just read this. This was on Facebook. Dear beloved family and friends, today our family is celebrating the life of Larry Buckman, our most amazing husband, father, grandfather, and servant for the kingdom. He left this earth to be with Jesus yesterday, January 16th, 2021, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We grieve for the loss we feel in our hearts and for the loss of all who knew him and were blessed by his charisma, his do-anything attitude, his passion for people, and his unwavering commitment to spread the gospel to every corner of the globe. And those of you who know them certainly know that that is true. Our hope is secure in the one who wrote each one of our stories since before a single word of creation was spoken. And we know the celebration in heaven today is amazing. Today, Larry is with the great I am. So this is a hard piece of news. I think for us as a church family, it certainly was for me as I've I heard this. I've known Larry for a long time. So we celebrate his life yet we grieve uh, with his family for his loss. So certainly be praying for the Buckman family throughout this time. I've also been having some conversations with Don Parsons. We've been praying for his parents, and thankfully uh, his parents who had COVID and were in the hospital are both home and recovering well, uh, but just continue to pray for them. And also Don has taken a couple trips over to Armenia over the past month or so. There's been a lot of fighting uh, in the Armenia-Azerbaijan region, region uh, yet the church in Armenia has stepped up and is really caring for the thousands of refugees who, who have fled into Armenia. Um, but it, people are coming to the gospel, uh, but we need to keep praying for all of that as well. Another, uh, another loss, yet celebration of life, is we're praying for the family of Doris Siri, who also passed away and went home to be with her Lord. So Pastor Sam has been talking to their family and caring for them. Uh, before we pray, by the way, if you, want, um, if you want information about our missionaries, if you're not receiving information but you'd like to, just get in touch with our church and we'll help you get connected with the, the email um, notifications that come out um, from, from our different missionaries. But just let us know. We'd be happy to help you with that. And before I pray, I want to invite you right now just to pause the video as you're watching this and pray on your own. Spend a few minutes just lifting up some of these needs. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, I'm sure, on your heart as well. But just take a couple minutes and, and pray on your own for some of these things that maybe are heavy on your heart or that you want to celebrate or that you want to just pray God's kingdom into. 
Let's pause our videos, all of us who are watching, and lift up a chorus of prayer to our great God. And by the way, I want you to know, I love how Revelation describes our prayers. The Apostle John sees this vision into the throne room of God. And what does he see but gold bowls full of incense, and he says, which are the prayers of God's people. Don't ever underestimate the power and the beauty of your prayers. God treasures your prayers, so much so that he describes them as, as sweet-smelling incense that rises to him, which he keeps in golden bowls in his very throne room. So don't ever underestimate what can happen when you pray. So go ahead and pause the video and pray for a few minutes on your own, and then you can hit play again, and we'll resume and, and join together as I pray. Father, thank you for all that you are. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your ability to do immeasurably more, infinitely more than all we can ask and even imagine according to your power that is at work in us. Lord, thank you for Pastor Sam. Thank you for Lisa. Thank you for their ministry in our congregation. Thank you for their love. Thank you for all the time that they give. And Lord, we pray for them now, that you will comfort them, that you will heal them, that you will give them peace and refreshment and restore them. Lord, give them the rest that they need. Give them all that they need and help them to know that they are loved by us and by you. So we lift them up to you this morning. Lord, we pray for our college kids. Thank you for them. Thank you for this season in their lives and all that they're learning and all the ways that you're working in them. Continue to change them and draw them close to you and fill them with your power and your wisdom and your, all that you are. So Lord, just guide them as they transition back into another semester. Lord, we lift up our students and our teachers and our administrators from all the local schools Give them wisdom and give them direction to know how to handle this, uh, this weird season that we're in. But thank you for the work, the effort that they're putting in for the sake of our young people. So we lift them up to you today. Father, we pray for our country and we thank you that, that you are our king. And we thank you that we can trust you and we can know that you are in control and you are sovereign. So Father, as, we, as our government changes hands and changes leadership and we enter into a new season, we know that you will guide us. We know that you are working in us and you are accomplishing your will and your plan. So we pray that that will happen, Lord, even, and that you will be glorified even in the inauguration that happens this week. Lord, for Donald Trump, for Joe Biden, for all the people who are connected to them, would you work in their hearts and draw them close to you? Show them your love, show them your power, give them your wisdom, guide their steps, and guide us as a nation, Lord. Father, we lift up our missionaries. Um, we lift up Dave and Andrea as they're in this time of transition. Please guide them and give them wisdom to what their next steps might be and how you want to use them. Thank you for their faithful ministry over all these years and for the partnership that we've been able to have with them. Father, we lift up uh, the Buckman family, and God, our, our hearts are, are saddened by this loss. Lord, we will miss Larry Buckman. Um, thank you for his ministry. Thank you for his service. Thank you for his heart for you and his passion and his creativity and all that he, all that he gave you, um, all that you did in him, all that you did through him. Lord, thank you for the many, many, many lives that are changed all over our world, people who know you as a result of his ministry and his family. And we pray for his family and those who knew him as they're grieving right now. Give them comfort. Lord, we pray for the family of Doris Siri too, as they're grieving and, and, and celebrating her life. Thank you for a faithful servant of you uh, who has known you for all these years and now is walking with you. God, we thank you for the Parsons. Uh, thank you for, for Don and Esther. Just continue to bless them and their family. Uh, thank you that Don's parents are home from the hospital and recovering well from COVID. Thank you for the great things you're doing in Armenia right now, the lives that are coming to you, the, 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 the people that are being cared for, the way that your kingdom is coming right there in Armenia. And so we pray that your kingdom will continue to come and that your will will be done right there in Armenia as it is in heaven. 
Thank you that you are working in each of our lives. Thank you that you know our needs and you are with us this morning and always. So God, just guide us as we turn into your word now and spend some time hearing from you. Would you speak to us? Would you challenge us? Would you comfort us? Would you give us what we need and teach us what we need and do in us what we need that we can know you more and that we can uh, more faithfully serve you in our neighbors, with our co-workers, with our friends, with our families, um, in all the places that you're calling us. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Sam, and I'm going to be reading from the prophet Isaiah found in the 40th chapter, verses 28 to 30. And then Pastor Leon will be coming and uh, bringing a message on this powerful passage talking about God's strength. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. For he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak, and even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today that you are with us and that Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting God. That Father, we can come to you right now and know that Lord, you can take us no matter where we are in our moments and our hours and our days. And that Lord, we can rest in you. And even if we feel weary today, no matter what's happening in our world and in our, even our own personal world today, we can turn it over you. So be with Pastor Leon as he, as he brings the message of, the, of these moments. And would you help us hear from you today? Would you help us turn whatever we have over to you? Because we know, Lord, you care for us. Guide us and lead us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday morning uh, message this morning. We're so glad that you decided to join us. Uh, we're going to be continuing in our series that God's present matters most. Uh, you probably noticed I have an eagle shirt on here and we'll be talking about that in a little bit a uh, little bit later in time and I'll tie the, find the eagle in. But I want us to uh, look at this morning uh, from the book of Isaiah chapter 40 talking about God's extraordinary strength and how he dealt with the people of Israel and Judah. The, uh, the pattern had been I think sometimes in our own lives where the nation of Israel would serve God and love God and then they would slip away from God and then God would have to bring judgment on them. And that seemed to be the pattern over and over and over again. So as we go into uh, Isaiah 40, a little bit of history there. If you look back at Isaiah 39, we see that, uh, that, that God had already dealt with judgment on the northern kingdom of Israel and he had uh, taken them into captivity uh, by, the, by the Assyrians but then he's foretelling in, in another 90 years uh, the southern kingdom of Judah would be taken into Babylonian captivity so with all the troubles they were going through and, and, and the upcoming invasion from the Babylonians we see in uh, chapter 40 through 66, we're not going to cover all those today, but mainly just chapter 40, we see Isaiah proclaiming comfort and deliverance uh, to the people of God. It says in Isaiah 48 that he told him that his word abides forever. And with his word abiding forever, they can always count upon his word. As we look farther, we want to look at God's sovereignty in Scripture. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, uh, the first chapter is dealing with God is part of the creator. But we also know that God is a ruler of all. He did create the world, but also he presides over the world. Unlike some of the deists would teach that God set everything in motion and then just walked away from it, God is intimately involved in his creation and the lives of his people. And God is infinitely superior to anyone else or anything else, any power wisdom or anything else, God is superior. It tells us that in Isaiah 40, 25 through 26. 
It says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these, he said. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. So we see God has superiority over, over all, over all the nations on the earth, over the idols. The idols they made were just made by hands. He's over all of those. He's over all the rulers of the earth because their lives are only transient, but his life is eternal. And his superiority over, over the other deities, many of them worship different deities, deities, other tribes and so forth. And God is present over all of those. We also know that God is always dependable. Once Isaiah shared this news and knowledge of them that who God is, and they already knew, but they need to be reminded, especially since they were facing a Babylonian captivity. So how did he do it? Well, he encouraged them by pointing to God being sufficient in everything. He knows all about us. His creation, everything about us, he knows about us. He knows about Israel. He remembered their covenant that he had with them. Since he is all powerful, he was also very strong in being involved in their lives and he was capable of meeting their every need. Someone once said, God is not too great to care. He is too great not to care. And I love that expression. Isaiah 40, 28 tells us, do you not know and have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. So this, this God, this Yahweh, was a covenant-keeping God. He doesn't grow tired. He's omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. He's unlimited by, by time and space. He's the eternal creator. And we should never, ever doubt them what he wants to do in our lives. Everything that matters hinges on God and who he is. Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You know, God just, just doesn't possess these uh, qualities. He shares these qualities, his strength with us and gives us the strength to carry on during hard times and hardships. I looked at a verse and found it in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says this, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about our weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Then we come to Isaiah 40 at the end. And these verses, I'm sure, <laughs> are very familiar to you. You've heard them time and time again. It's found in 30 and 31. Though you grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. You know, even some of the very young or the strong that feel like they're so strong, circumstances can weigh them down. So we know that by trusting God, we, we get to have that renewed strength in our lives. In this particular uh, passage of scripture, the, the Hebrew word gain in there suggests the ideal of an exchange. We're exchanging the strength we have, that inadequate strength, for God's abundant strength. We switch to, He gives us His strength. And those who wait upon the Lord, that, that protection, that uh, part there also implies two things. Number one, complete dependence on God and also willingness on our part to allow Him to decide the terms for us. Can we know those who wait upon the Lord, and it's hard at times, to endure with energy to spare as long as we're trusting Him for that energy and that strength. 
know, these verses are full of principles that we, we need to follow, which, the, which every believer may draw upon for comfort and strength in any age. So I have a question for us. The question is this, how does all of this apply to us? And how do these promises bring comfort in our present distresses that you're probably going through right now? And I know there's many of those going on through right now with everything going on in our society. So God is there for us. Just in Isaiah's day and time, the time we live in is, is, is are difficult. But we know that God always, always keeps his promises. We know that the real comfort he gives, the comfort he gives, gives us strength as we fellowship with this wonderful God who is always there for us. We get to know him even better through his word. I have a story for you. I call it the Eagle Lady, Eagle Lady story. Uh, years ago, when I was still a principal, we would have these uh, um, times once a week where we'd have different speakers come in, uh, different people come in to, 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 to give the kids uh, enrichment activities. So I came across this lady, she was called the Eagle Lady. And what she would do, she would bring, bring her birds of prey to our uh, large uh, gymnasium so they could be able to fly. She, she brought uh, ravens, she brought uh, owls, and she brought an eagle. And that eagle, I, I tell you, was something else. I, I held the, um, the owl on my arm with a leather strap, and it was a beautiful creature. But after a while, my arm started to kind of get heavy. But the next year, when she came, she allowed the eagle to step on my arm. Wow, what a beautiful, magnificent bird. And as I looked at it and looked at him and saw all of his beauty, I was thinking, you know, this is something that God created. And I think we can look at that today as an example, because he says we'll mount up like wings of eagle. And I first looked at the eagle's eyes and I was looking at those eyes and I saw a focus. He was focused on me at times. And he was focused on the kids at times. And the experts tell us that they can see 20 miles away and they can isolate their vision on one particular game that they're going to go after. So I'm thinking we in the same way can focus on the things that God has for us that God would give us the vision of an eagle. It reminds me of Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, where it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you might not grow weary and lose heart. You see, God doesn't want us to lose heart. He didn't want the, the Israelites to lose heart, because we know he's always with us there. And in and, and, he gives us that strength to carry on. Well, then I um, looked at the eagle's claws. You know, the eagle's claws are so strong. As I had that leather thing there, I could feel the pressure of those eagle's claws still on my arm, and it was it was immense. And the experts tell us that once the eagles Grab, up, grab on to their prey, there's no way you can pry them loose from that. So we're to never let go. God never lets go. And just don't give up on our dreams, whatever those dreams may be. Times are tough, but God's with us and he will hold on to us 
just like the eagle. Last of all, I want to talk about the eagle's wings. <clears throat> the eagle's wingspans are huge. When he's put his wings out, they would touch the side of my face. I'd have to kind of lean back just to get just to get out of the way of his wings. The experts tell us that during the storm and strong winds, other birds become frightened and disappear with fear because of the storm and the strong winds. But that's when an eagle actually takes flight. They're able to float upon those strong winds and fly to, to heights. Where other birds see dangers, eagles, they see opportunities. So, in conclusion, storms are, are, are a way of life. It was a way of life for, for the Israelites that they were able to get through those storms because they had a God that never gave up on them, a God that loved them, a God that kept the covenant. In the same way, He keeps the covenant with us because He loves us. And let us not see these things in our, as, as being obstacles, but ways that we can glorify God as He helps us through those difficult situations. Let us spread our wings like the eagles and soar, always depending on this God, who is a God of extraordinary strength. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for this day, and we, we thank you for the message from your word. We thank you that your word is not returned to you void, but accomplishes everything that's been sent. And Father, we thank you for your sustainable, everlasting, magnificent love. And Father, the strength that you give us through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we live each day. We thank you that you're always with us. You never forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray.